And I said, William, where? Do as the Spirit controls you. We we'll bless God for today. Brethren, I just want us to lift up our voice and bless God and appreciate Him. He's the covenant keeping God. He's the Alpha, He's the Omega. He's the reason for your existence. He's the all sufficient God. Let's appreciate Him, brethren. Let's honor this God. Thank Him for the gift of life. Thank Him for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. I appreciate God, brethren. There's none comparable to Him. He's the one that has kept you thus far. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. And by His grace, you see the end of this year in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We appreciate you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Strength of Israel, we want to thank you. The owner of heaven and earth want to bless you. The Alpha and the Omega we say you are a good God. The captain of our salvation, the bishop of our life, we say you are a good God. Looking back from the beginning of this year to date, we can see your faithfulness in our lives and in your church. Thank you, Lord, for miracle of sleeping and waking up. Thank you for the salvation of our souls. Thank you for homes. Thank you for family. Thank you, Daddy, for Johnny Messis. Ah. Father, may your name be glorified forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for victory on every side. Ah. Even as we examine your word this morning, Lord, we pray, Daddy. Open our eyes and give us understanding this morning in Jesus name there is no god of man if there's no go there's no god if there's no god of man we pray this morning father express yourself in our midst and at the end of the day lord we pray unanimously your glory lord we will not share and the blessing will be that of your people in Jesus mighty name we are pray let's have a seat brother I can see the way pastor is so fresh. Ah, it's good to wrestle. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, amen. You are welcome, sir. Amen. Only we have not seen our own Nigeria or something. Amen. Okay. Uh, this morning, by the special grace of God, we'll be speaking on anger. 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 We want to extract anger. Uh, is there anybody that is seated here this morning that you have never been angry before? Please shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, amen. Ah, I would like to see you after the service, sir, so that you can show me the secret. And if there's somebody here that you have been angry before, shout a living hallelujah. Aha, uh -huh. we are in the same category. Thank God for his mercy. You know, you discover that because we are humans, we are still work in progress. There is no way in one way or the other, anger will not arose, either among husband and wife, either among siblings, either among co-workers, among friends. It will arose in one way or the other. But, and somebody may also ask me, anger is the work of devil. Brethren, it's not the work of devil. It's not the work of devil. It's not the work of devil. God himself has placed anger in us. Uh, somebody say, ah, well, this man has started with heresy. I will explain. It is an emotion that God himself has placed within us. Whenever it triggers, as human beings, we should be very cautious. If you ask me, uh, the same question is this. Why is it that what God has given you as a man, you are now looking for 200 women? Is it the wrong thing that God gave you to you? No. 
I pray that the Lord will give us a better understanding this morning in Jesus' name. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 8, please, I'll still come to that definition of anger that I gave us. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. Before we go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 8, the Lord that describes to the children of Israel the way and manner they have to live their life and comfort their lives. He says in verse 1, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, which Christ is sitting at the right, on, at the right hand of God. Now let's look at verse 8. But now you yourselves are to put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, 50 language out of your mouth. God is not the one that will do it for you. It is you that will do it yourself. We just want to examine some few points in the Bible that has to do with anger. Let's look at James chapter 1 verse 20. James chapter 1 verse 20. The Bible says, James 1.20, For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. The wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. That simply means that your anger towards a person does not produce God's righteousness. In a person, we believe naturally that when we test somebody the peace of our mind, they will change. We believe when we test somebody, this is what you have done, they will change. Yes, they could change for five, ten minutes, but they cannot change everlasting. Proverbs 29, verse 11. Proverbs 29, verse 11. I'm trying to take some of these things one after the other. Proverbs 29, verse 11. The Bible says, a fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man owes them back. When you see an individual very angry, un uncontrollable, it is regarded as a fool. But when a wise man or a wise woman is able to control his or herself, that is what the Lord expects us, that no matter the situation, as a child of God, we should be able to work, control ourselves. Irrespective of what he sees, irrespective of the danger, irrespective of whatever anybody says, we, as a child of God, should be able to work, control ourselves. Because the elders have a saying that walls are heard, when they are dropped on the ground, they are what? Nobody can pack it again. You don't come back and say, I don't really mean it that way, but you have said the word out of anger. So when we are hungry, brethren, let's be very careful of what, what we say. Anger has destroyed so many relationships. Anger has destroyed so many marriages. Anger has destroyed precious things that people are supposed to collect from each other because of anger. Brethren, I want us to understand something. As a child of God, born again, saved by the precious blood of Jesus, born by the, saved by the precious blood of Jesus, do not govern your life by how you feel or your emotion. Many of us are saying, well, I am moved by my emotion, I am moved by my feeling. As a child of God that is spirit filled, that is born again, our emotion must not control us. If you are not born again, yeah, your emotion can, can control you. But as long as you have given your life, you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, and you, your emotion must not what, control you again. You must, not re, you must not relate the way you feel. I feel like saying this. I feel like saying this. There are many things that we have said that have that have what? Driven people away. There are many things that we have said that have allowed some people to say, I'm no more doing this. 
even as husband and wife. Out of anger, you just you send out the word that you're not supposed to see. And the woman will just go to her shell, and that is all. And the man will go to his chair. You, you, be, you think you'll be husband. You, you be husband. When they are calling husband, you're also coming out. She didn't really mean it in that way, but because of anger. Because if, if she's saying, if you know you are really husband, why did, they, why did she allow the family to collect her dowry from you? But because of anger. Please note, anger is an emotion God gives us that something in you is not right. It is an inner danger warning. Anger is an emotion God gives us that something in you is not right. It is an inner danger warning. Whenever it arises within you, it's a signal. And as a child of God, we should know it within Say. So I know this is a weakness in me. You be able to walk, control it. You shouldn't say, when I'm angry, I can't control myself. It should not be hard from us. Psalm 37 verse 8. from anger and forsake wrong. Do not fret it. Only cause what? Arm. In other words, you discover that whenever anger is supposed to arose within us, which will run away from it, it causes harm. It causes situations that are unpalatable. Proverbs 22, 24 to 25. I want to make emphasis on it. The Bible says, Make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man. Do not go. Verse 25, please. Lest you learn his way and set snare for yourself. In other words, the Lord is telling us, when you know somebody has an angry anger issue, do not go closer to them. Do not make them your friends. That is the warning of the Bible. Oh, you say, I want to go and save him. No, no, no. You can't save anybody that the Lord has not saved. Because the Bible is telling us that when you move in the midst of somebody that is always what? Angry. Before you know what is happening, you are, You also become what? Start exhibiting it. Yeah, you say, what is pastor saying? I will, say, I will explain it to you. I have an MD that I worked with. I will not mention his name. A very reputable person while in India. But the man has one problem. He's a stingy man. Extremely stingy. Extremely stingy. And the people that knew him very well, they said the wife was very good. She was very generous. But after, 15, after 20 years in the marriage, the woman now became what? Akagon. <laughs> after 20 years, in fact, if you enter the house, they can't give you water to drink. And they said, ah, auntie, you, auntie was not like this before. But because the man has robbed him with the spirit of what? Stinginess. Until now, be, you know, I you know one thing about life. When they are teaching you, you become what? An expert than the person that is teaching you. When they ask you to solve simultaneous equation and you become an authority, you know, you can even solve it more than the person that has taught you. You tell the person it's not X plus this. No, no, you take to stage three, stage two, stage four, and the person will be looking at you. That's what happens. When you become a friend with somebody that is angry, you say, this man is my friend, this sister is my friend, and you know she has the spirit of anger. Don't worry. Within the next three years, check yourself. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Brethren, this morning is for us to just look at some of these things in our lives. Especially to our single sisters. Do not go closer to any man that has anger issue. Oh, I will change him. I love him. He's a good brother. He only comes once in a while. But when I tell him, he comes down. You are lying. You know, this man is, is has 
traces of anger within himself. And he said, no, but Tom understands. He said, yeah, you know I love you. But you know when this thing comes upon me, I can't control myself. But don't worry, I will adjust in the marriage. It's a lie. I can't adjust. What you need to do is that what the Bible says, so flee from what? Appearances of evil. You don't need to, you don't need prayer point. Also, Pastor, Pastor, the problem is that the guy is good, it's wonderful, but he has one small issue. The small issue is that he has an guy issue. But I know by the mercy of God, prayer and fasting and with your own prayer, well, things can work out. It's a lie. It won't work out. After beating you blue black, you will know. I don't want it about anger. After beating the person, they will say, you know, you are the one that caused it. You are the one that caused it. But you know I love you. I want to bow your leg. Amen. Please, Psalm 29, Proverbs 21, 19. I want all the men to read it. Proverbs 21, 19. I want all the men to read it, please. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody is looking at somebody. I will not look at that side. The Bible says, better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and what? Angry woman. The Bible is giving us admonition. Yeah, it says, look, my brother. For you to live long, don't dwell with a woman that has what? Spirit of anger. It is better for you to go to the wilderness and be living there. It's not me, it's the word of God. But thank God for Christ. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Don't come and look at me and say, Pastor, say something and you go home and say, start packing your load. It's not what, that's not what I said, though. Uh -huh. If you pack your load, you're on your own. Oh. And your wife is looking, what are you doing? I am going to the wilderness. <laughs> I, I didn't ask you to go to the wilderness. Oh. <laughs> so don't say, Pastor, you have caused problems in my life. I didn't ask you to go to the wilderness. Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I didn't ask you to go to the wilderness. You are not John the Baptist. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the Bible is telling us as young men, as family men, if you know these issues, by, his, by the grace of God. But some of us justify anger. Some of us justify anger. You say it is written in the word of God. Yes. But let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. Ephesians 4 26. Be angry. And do not say, yes, it's in the Bible. Some people will quote it very fast. Even the Bible sanction, they say, be angry. Do not let the sun go down on your road. They say, yeah, you can be angry, but do not sin. But let's read it very well. The Lord is not saying you, you are not allowed, you are not permitted to be angry if you want to. But it's not encouraging. But if for one reason or the other you are angry with an individual, with your husband, with your father, with your father, before that day, before the, that, that night of that day goes, make sure you settle it. Is that, the, is that what we do? Husband and wife have issues. The wife will turn like this. The wife, husband will talk like this. And they will sleep overnight. Have they settled it? And you say, it is permitted in the world. So when we read the word of God, please, let's read it with understanding. Like I said, it is an emotion. It is allowed to come. But it is like what? A danger sign. When it's coming, you should say, no, 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 no. It's not permitted. It's not permitted. So when you are justifying that, I'm allowed to, I'm allowed to be hungry. No, 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 no. You must ensure that what? You settle it before the end of that day. That's the word of God. And that's the biblical standard. Because I want you to know one thing. They don't settle quarrel in heaven. Heaven is a place where they sing praises and songs throughout, the old, all, throughout all the whole life of eternity. You asked me this morning, Pastor, how do we handle our anger issue? How do we handle it? One, 
Learn to surrender or yield on yield rights. One, learn to surrender or yield on yield rights. And I will explain this. Most people get angry because they believe they have right, an infinite right upon everything to do something, to hold something, to act in whatever way. Some of us even say, when your right stops, that is for intellectual purpose. You say, when your heart, when your right stops, that is where my home begins. You are right. When, the, when you are coming to the church and they are saying, the ushers are telling you, stay in the phone. You say, no, 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 I have the right to stay wherever I want to stay. But let me submit to us this morning. As a church, you and I have no right as long as it's involved with God. We have no right. It's a pastor, prove it to me in the Bible. Let's go to Psalm 24, verse 1. Psalm 24, verse 1. Look at it. The Bible says, let's read it together. Psalm 24, verse 1. 1, 2, 3. Amen. Did you create the world? Did you create yourself? So why do you say you have rights? Why do I say I have rights? We don't have any rights. We have no right to anything. When we were coming to this world, we came to this world naked. And that is why you see when any child is coming to this world, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to buy a house, I want to go to America, I want to go to London, I want to have PhD, I want to do the yeah, 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 yeah. But when we are dying, we say, I've surrendered everything. The right you claim, the right to justify, is not your right. That husband is not your right. That wife is not your right. It belongs to who? God. God is the owner, God is the owner of that husband. God is the owner of, the, of that wife. God is the owner of, of those children. You are, you are now just what? Custodian. We are custodians. We don't have right over them. The house God has given to you belongs to God. It's one that gives you ability to be able to work, to pay the mortgage. Those cars you are saying, it's my car, it's my car. Those cars belong to God. Those, those certificates you say you, be, you have, oh, well, belongs to God. Because when you were coming to this world, you didn't come with certificates. So what is it that we are saying, it's my own, it's my own, it's my own, it's my own, it's my own? Nothing. I remember some time ago, Pastor, if you remember, we brought one pastor from Ghana and he preached. He told us when his father was to die, he said they should give, they should bury with one million, one million pounds, no, one million dollar. And the son said, no problem. He said, no, one million. He said, yes. And they wrote what? A draft of one million. And they placed it in his pocket and they, and they sent him away. He was claiming his right, Abby. And they gave it to him to go and spend it there. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, so that is where the issue of anger starts from. It is my right. It is my right. I have no, no, no. You don't have rights. You and I have what? We have no rights. So, brethren, why should you and I be angry and be claiming right? When I've been issue, we did not bring anything to this world. And we are living this world with what? Without anything. The second reason that causes, that causes anger is what I call what? Expectation. Many of us have so much expectation from our children, from our husband, from our wives. You are coming from work, you have so much expectation. Say, today is fire for fire. And when you get home, your wife is saying, Look, I'm tired though. <laughs> you become angry. Because what your expectation is so high. You are coming as a woman, you say, Your husband today is ah, it's going to be glorious. And the man says, Oh boy, I tire. And you become angry. <laughs> Because why? Your expectation is so high. I hope I'm making sense this morning. 
Somebody is looking at the wife, saying that you need to talk to. <laughs> now you pass what they talk to. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Brethren, when the expectations are not realized, we become what? Angry. Expectations for my wife, expectations for our friends, expectations for my children. Let's look at what Psalm, Psalm 62 verse 1 and 2 says. Psalm 62 verse 1 and 2. Psalm 61, 62 verse 1 and 2. Truly, my soul silently wait for, for God. For him comes what? My salvation. Verse 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not what? Be greatly what? Move. Now, let's look at verse 5. Verse 5. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation, for my expectation is for who? Is it from your husband? No. From your wife? No. From your bank account? No. From who? No. So when our expectation is so high, oh, I'm so sure, Sister Shodipe will do it. Ah, it's sure. And when she fails, we become what? Angry. And that's why the Bible says our expectation should not be what? Upon any individual, but who? God. So those are some of the things that causes what? Anger in the midst of brethren, in the midst of family, in the midst of colleagues. I've spent so much on this child, my expectation is that they will take, and the things are not working. The girl and the husband now, they say they are on their own. You're saying, what? After spending so much? I've been telling my wife, I say, hey, releasing the role for these children, no? We work on the local job. We're releasing the rope. Release the rope gradually. Okay, oh. I've been, I've been, man, you are in the spirit. Brendan, most of us are not managing our expectation. Let's manage our expectation. Brethren, our expectation in life must be from God, not from any man. We are not called to put hope upon any man, rather what? On God. That is why the slogan in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Victory Chapel, is called, Where We Discover What? Because our hope is in what? In God. Our hope is in God, not in man. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, but let all our expectation in life always be our what? God. Because he's the only one that cannot cut our expectation. I can tell you tomorrow, come and take this, and at the end of the day, an issue just arose. And you knock at my door, continue to knock at my door. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The third point is that we must be loving. The moment we are loving, you just discover that our expectations, we know how, we know how to control it. The spirit of love must be with us. Let's look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. 1 John chapter 4, 7 to 8. 1 John, not, not uh, John. 1 John. You're not giving me the right scripture. 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and not of what? Beloved, 
let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. In other words, God, everything concerning God is what? Love. He who does not, he who does not love does not know God, for God is what? Love. Now, let's look at verse 12. So, when you're talking about I love, I love God, let's look at verse 12. No one has seen God. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been what? Perfected in what? In us. Before you talk about love, you must, when you're when you saying, I, I, I love God so much, what of that fellow human being that you see often? Because when you love that person, you won't be angry towards no matter what. Like I, tell, like I told us, let's manage what? Our expectation. The moment you manage your expectation, you will always put into consideration that this person is what? Human being. This person is a man. This person is a human. Blood, and uh, water and uh, blood, what? Flows in his body. But many of us who don't manage our what? Our expectation. No, he's a child of God. I don't expect him to be like a child of God. At that time, you say that church, no, no, no. You see, there's something I see. Many of us don't even want to believe that pastors are children, of, uh, pastors are human beings. You believe their world. The expectation must be too hard. No, no, they cannot make wrong. Pastor can never, never be wrong. General overseer can never be wrong. We are forgotten that world. They are human beings. I say, yeah. So when the pastor becomes wrong, or it makes enemies say, say, you see, you see, I've told you, they are all the same. Say, so because of that, I'm not coming to church again. Because that pastor fumble. I'm not coming to church again. Our expectation is too high. It's on, it's on pastor, not on God. But if the pastor makes me say, you're not to yourself, yes, let us pray for him. Because we know he's a man and he's a child of God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So when we have the spirit of love, genuine love, even when somebody steps on you, you won't feel it. You won't feel it. You won't feel it. Finally, brethren, do not revenge. The Bible says, vengeance is who? My. In the process of trying to revenge, we cause more issues. I must tell that sister my mind. She must know, even though I want to react to her, I'll put Jesus on one side and I'll cut that of my village in one side. And Jesus does not sit in defense. He said that Jesus is in your life or is out of your life. You don't carry Jesus like clothes. Many of us are carrying Jesus like clothes. I'll put it off and I'll put it on. No. The Bible says if you are in Christ, you are a new creation, be all things are passed away and everything has become what? If they slap you, and you know you cannot turn your other face, run away. It is Jesus that waited, they gave him the first one, bah. they gave him the second one. Bah. So if they give you the first one bah, like this, and you know it's very hot, you cannot just say, thank you, sir, and you find your way. Because in the process of trying to wait for the second slap, <laughs> something, <laughs> something else may happen, no. Something yes may happen. Don't, don't ask me what may happen. You may become, <laughs> you may become Mike Tyson. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Brother. Let's examine our lives. Have we been dealing with the issue of anger? Let's rise on our feet. Give me grace to follow, abundant grace to follow. We need me your grace to follow. follow. Oh, your, your grace is enough for us. We need your grace to follow, abundant grace to follow.
Upon the grace to follow, give me the grace to follow.